last um, item for today. We've got a big announcement in 20 or well, 19 minutes. So we want to be done by then. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's probably already out. Uh, right. So, um, so we're Mo Metropolitan um, Discretionary Response Fund. So, um, Sam, did you want to speak to this? Happy to take it as read and take questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions, Tim? Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I guess um, with regards to the first one, um, is this going to be something that we are, that may be permanent that they will return back to us? There's no funding history, so is this? A, with is this with Canterbury uh, Zoo Kina? Yeah. So Marie Byrne is hopefully on Zoom and can assist with that question. Yes, I'm here. Um, hopefully not. Um, the, what they're applying for is um, some equipment which will help establish them and um, going forward um, it's it's a different type of martial art so it's a Middle Eastern martial arts they need fairly heavy equipment so uh, they're looking for, for costs um, to to have some equipment that the um, that new new members of the group can come in and use rather than using um, existing borrowing existing members equipment. Yep. Cool. Thank you. Great. Ayani. Thanks. Um, I was just concerned with the third one that um, I just wanted, when, when have you talked to them last about having the event um, in Christchurch? They talk about Tapai not being um, being double booked or something, um, but I don't think Tapai is open. Um, and then they talk about using other venues. So obviously with the COVID situation, do we do we have any sense of a venue and how likely it is that's actually going to happen. So we spoke to them yesterday, but um, Josh will give you an update when we. Okay, cool. Horncastle Arena is the, the venue that they've gone for. Is is, is V Base contributing? VO sponsor VO. Sorry, sorry. Yes, sir. Right, and is it going to be? Are, are they from reading it? Are they going to have people coming from all around New Zealand to attend? So at the moment, that's the plan. Um, we, don't, we don't know where we're going to end up um, with, with the traffic light system. And to be honest, they've, they've, they haven't put things on hold, but they are in a holding pattern at the moment to see. So there's been no real investment uh, financially gone out at this stage because of the uncertainty. They're going to have to kick into it pretty soon. But at the moment, uh, they are in a holding pattern. All right. Do, do, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm just kind of concerned that it may not go ahead and we and we spend that money and we just lose lose the money. So what safeguards have we got around yep. the money only being paid out if the event's going to happen and it not being used up in sort of admin stuff and then it getting cancelled and then us losing the money? Uh, they'd, so probably the check, they'd probably return the funding if, if the event didn't go ahead. And, and the purpose of this fund is for an award that we will give, well, a council will, or the mayor, someone will give on behalf of the city. Uh, so there is no admin cost with it. It's it's to deliver an award, and, and it's not a $23,000 award. But we're, we're not expecting there will be any any cost to us if this event doesn't go ahead. Thanks, um, Gary. Can I just... um, jump, no, hang on, Jimmy. Okay, thank you. Regarding to a second one. Resolution to say subject, regarding subject. Second one, they're seeking the funding is a twenty eight thousand rather than twenty, am I right? This is for cultivate Christchurch? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. The other one, whether they apply for suit uh, this uh, discretion fund, whether they couldn't afford due to timing to apply for all the strength and community fund or not. So the they applied time. to the Strengthening Communities Fund for something kind of different. So it was the regeneration of the land they've got in the red zone because they yes. knew they were going ahead with that and they didn't apply for wages like they have in previous years due to the uncertainty of what their wage costs would be while they were going through a bit of a, I guess you'd call it a restructure. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Tom. Yeah, um, just to clarify, with, with events, and it's COVID is unique, in events like an iceberg, the majority and the vast majority of the money is spent before the event, and you have to spend it if, unless you're not going to do it at all. And COVID just has derailed so many things 
I mean, some of the vets that were going to come to Christchurch have are now on their fourth booking and it's been cancelled three times you know so there are a lot of people sweating out there but it's just one of those things either we plan for it and it may not happen or we just don't bother and wait till it's all over and we're living with COVID so I think we've got to keep going that's just you know the world that the events industry are living in that's a question well I just uh, it's just important to explain that anyway but getting back to my question then (laughs) seeing no one wants to know about it um (laughs) um, cultivate Christchurch with their funding history is this something that's how much? Because uh, I see for twenty one, twenty two, they're also getting. Um, are they getting funding anywhere else in the council, or is this the only one that they're getting for the? So they receive strengthening communities funding for the regeneration project in the red zone, uh, and last year they got discretionary response funding for wages as well. Mm-hmm. Now we did get a report um, from that from the year's worth of funding, which I would be happy to yep. give you some of the outcomes from that for you to consider. So in the in that year period, they had 318 volunteers. Yep. 219 of those were under 25. 26 were young people who were not in education, training or uh, employment. Now of those they employed who hadn't been in any of those three criteria, 75% went on to some form of employment. Which is fantastic. Yeah. With with regards to that, could rather than them coming back every year not knowing whether they're going to get funding or not, would it not be better to kind of do something permanent Correct. And, and work with the government to say, look, we're willing to do this if you're willing to do something out that put in as well? Is that yeah. something that we could look at? Sure. So we have we've met before with this group with other funders, including government uh, and discuss those options and what we'll be saying to them is okay this will be the last time you come to the discretionary response fund for this Mm. next time will be strengthening communities fund which they'll apply for in april may and um, possibly receive depending on your decision in august and that could be a multi-year agreement of our contribution to to wages alongside other funders who will have different timings of their commitments but i'd certainly like to 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 um, support that Yep. And th- that would hopefully allow you guys to go to those other funders and say, hey, look, if you guys come in, this is what we can do and make Certainly. A, a multi-year. Correct. So, yeah, so if yep. we could, that would be good. Sure. And, um, and the final one, um, this is a real win for Christchurch, I think, and I think it's something that we should be celebrating. And I, I mean, and you mentioned before about CNZ support as well. Could you explain a wee bit about that, please? So um, they have... Uh, they are contributing to to the the uh, the award. Mm. Um, they're also they are doing a lot of work with the organisers around um, invites and, and the corporate side of it, the promotion of it. It's a uh, you know it's a black tie event yep. at two hundred dollars a plate. Um, it's it's targeting um, you know I guess the corporates as well yeah. uh, so the, they're doing they're doing a lot of that work that we don't have the skills to do that- um, and yes it is a it is a school we are we are we are lucky in the sense or unlucky or Auckland's unlucky that they've always held it mm. um, the first conversation we had was we will do this bigger and better and we'll steal it off Auckland so mm. that's the goal um, I think I think for Christchurch this would be great It'd be nice if it's kind of been multi-year okay to, to further answer councillor johansson's question regarding events funding yeah. uh with the f- with the events and festivals fund uh which obviously they're constantly funding events they will fund 50 percent up front and then 50 percent on delivery of the event and that's a way of managing that contribution risk so that's something that could be amended to to this if that's something that the elected members wanted um, but as Josh said, regardless, we will work with that group to, if, if the event is cancelled, to recover as much of the costs as we can. Right, any further questions? Well, yeah, well, Sarah will move, but Aaron's got, a, so I've got a second to first. Yeah, Jake, second. So Aaron, got a question? Yeah, just one around the... the now. Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll let Aaron ask a question. Oh, sorry. The um, just one quickly on on cultivate, because uh, I've been around quite some time, and um, they're essentially a working farm in town. Do they have a model going forward 
to be sustainable, that they stand on their own. Because if they're teaching people how to grow, because I watch videos on this stuff all the time from around the world and lots of little urban farms, some you can be quite profitable. Right. Um, why are they not following that model? Like, because so otherwise a- it's subsidised food at quite a high amount, which sure. is unsustainable. And you can grow organically urban farm and be very sustainable. And so do they have a plan to, become, and I'm picking most people that are training aren't being paid. So you've got like free labor and you've got other stuff. So, mm-hmm. so it seems an unbalanced model. There's a few aspects to it. One is they've had a bit of a change of leadership 12 months ago and they probably are moving more towards a sustainable model, including reducing their wage costs by focusing on kind of the things that are more commercially viable such as the selling of vegetables and moving away from some of the things that might have been nice to do but weren't kind of paying the way. Uh, so they're in, in on that journey. Also, oh. they're in an expansion phase with, say, new land coming available, such as the red zone land, and that, of course, has some costs attached to it before they can become long-term sustainable. So those two factors, I think, they are heading in that direction, but they're not there yet, hence the ongoing grant applications. And so you've seen a model where they become sustainable? With the moving towards it, yeah. Right. So right. if you look in the uh, application, for example, the, the person who wrote this assessment who's unavailable today has um, observed that they've um, the changes they've been making have made a significant impact on their net profit, which was uh, a, lo- a s- deficit of 41000 uh, in the previous year to right. 2020 was a surplus of 10000 right. right, okay. Yeah, because there's Thanks. a lot of people who grow vegetables and make a living at it. And sure. so that is... If they're teaching people, they should be teaching that, yep. not just how to grow the vegetables. I yep. mean, that's cool too, but um, okay. sustainability is about economic sustainability. Thanks, right. Aaron. Um, so I think we'll move into debate now. Has anyone got any debate? Right, I've put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Against, abstentions, carried. So um, we're up to Karakia. So, Jimmy, if you're ready. Uruhia, 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 Ki te Uru, Tapu Nue, O te Tane, Kawatia, Kemama, Te Nakau, Te Tinana, Te Wairua, E Te Awa, Takata, Koena, Onono, Wakaria, Ake, Tiuna, Kiatina, Tina, Umie, Uye, Tai Hie. Thanks, everyone.